Hello, hello. I have arrived. All right, so, so begins another streaming week. Yeah, fortunately, last week was cut short a little bit, feeling a little bit unwell and all of that. But, oh well, we're here again. We are here to take take on the challenge of the mountain once more. And so, yeah, we'll get into that here in just a second. But first, we have business. So, today, getting over it with Bennett Foddy, of course. Tomorrow, we should be seeing some more Tales of Arise, ideally. Thursday, should be some more uh, Valhalla, Sheppy Sheps. Valhalla Cyberpunk Bartending Action, our ongoing collab series. And then, uh, yeah, Friday, should be more Tales of Arise. Yeah, there is, I am, yeah, my work schedule is a little bit different this week. It is a little bit different this week, and it will be a little bit, no, actually, hold on, or no. Well, it'll be different. My work schedule is different tomorrow. It's different tomorrow. So I could be delayed up to an hour, possibly longer, depending on circumstances. <clears throat> so that could impact when the stream tomorrow starts, or even if it does start. Yeah, as for the rest of the week, I don't... You know what? I've got my phone in front of me. I can check my schedule. I'm not going to speculate baselessly. I'm going to confirm. I'm going to confirm what I know to be true before I speak speak on things. Yes, okay. But yeah, so, there should be no other changes from my usual work schedule this week. So, yeah. Tomorrow could be delayed by up to an hour, like I said, but other than that, every day except for Thursday, we should expect about 7.30 p.m. Central Time. And then the Thursday stream should be at about 8 p.m. Central Time. Yes. And like I was saying, next week my schedule is going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to be working... I have the, the day of Thanksgiving and the day after Thanksgiving off. So I will be... You make up for that, basically, because I have to meet a certain certain requirements for how much I work in a, a period. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I need to, uh, I'm going to be working extra on the two days beforehand. Not that much of a, not that much of a vacation when you have to work double, basically, the two days leading up to it, but, you know, it is what it is, I suppose. But yes, so anyway, all of this is to say that I will be working extra on, I will be working extra on Tuesday and Actually, yeah, Tuesday and Wednesday, so I may or may not be available to stream then. I expect to be doing non-work related, but still quite time-consuming things on the day of Thanksgiving itself. Giving thanks and all that. Eating food. Um, but yeah, so that may be... That is also a little bit up in the air. I suppose I also don't know what Chef's plans for the holiday are, so depending on... That can change a lot depending on what she's doing. But Thursday, I don't necessarily anticipate anything having any obligations or anything of the sort. So we may, and I feel like every time I say this, something something goes terribly awry, such that we end up doing nothing. But we may potentially have time to do some extra streaming on, on Friday. Again, every single time that I've said this, I think within living memory, or at least, you know, within the past few months. Uh, every single time that I've said that we may, I may do extras, I may do an extra long stream on a given day, I end up not streaming at all on that day. So I perhaps have cursed myself now, but, you know, that's how it is sometimes, I suppose. Yes. So I suppose that should be everything, everything that needs to be gone over before we get started. Um, uh, all right. I did also prepare a list of topics that I wanted to discuss uh, while we were in game, but then, but now I realize I put them. I made this list on my desktop computer upon which I am playing the video game, so I'm not going to be able to see this list while I'm while I am playing the game. So I guess I'm taking the time to 
look over it again real quick. It's not a very long list. Perhaps it could stand to be more detailed, but it was kind of a last minute thing, as a lot of my things tend to be. Anyway, video game. Heading over it. Oh. When last we left, we were here. More or less, basically. I mean, I guess exactly. Should be. Oh, nope, hold on. There we go. Anyway, so we were here. We were doing... Yeah, we failed to get up to... We failed the, the bucket challenge so severely that we were unable to... What? We lost our place no. by it, and we were forced oh. to make the climb once again. We have not successfully made our way back up yet, as you can see from the fact that there is no bucket on screen. That was a pretty good first jump, I, I must say. But yes, anyway. So oh. now, that I, now that I have things that I know that I want to talk about ahead of time, let's start talking about some things. So first of all, the most most pertinent, most pressing, well, nothing, nothing, none of this is really pressing, but no. the most, I suppose, relevant, perhaps, is, yeah, so, you know, Twitter has been happening recently. Oh. I don't expect it to be, to necessarily, you know, shut down or anything in the near future, but it's, it's, uh, a lot of people have been not so, not so pleased with Twitter or anything. I'm probably going to keep using it. I don't necessarily see any reason to any more reason than I may have had in the in the past to stop using Twitter what? as a platform for VTubing related content and such. Yeah, so my Twitter will remain active for, you know, the same thing that it's always been. Oh. But yeah, I think uh. one thing one thing a lot of people recently have sort of been moving on to a different Microblogging platform. I'm playing the wrong game. Oops. Or it says I'm playing the wrong game. We can't have that now, can we? But yes, people have been moving to a, a different... Uh, yes, there we go. I did copy and paste it, right. I thought ahead. Nice. But yes, anyway. So, uh, Tumblr, basically. Yeah, I know. I know. Judo made a Tumblr, if I remember correctly. What? Yeah, I don't know that. I don't know necessarily anyone else in my immediate sphere that has already made one. Yeah, I've actually, I have actually had a a Tumblr for longer than I've had a a Twitch account. What? I've just never, never used it. Never used it in the in the time that I've been streaming. Basically, I don't. Uh, I am not what you would call an active user of Tumblr, but in general. You know, it is a, honestly, it's a website that I think is, is more, or it's a blogging platform that is better suited for my tastes in how I would like to present things, basically. But yeah, more specifically, it, you know, it offers, you know, things like tagging and an art and an easily searchable, navigable archive page so that you can... Oh. Yeah, uh, in particular, one whenever I get around to making more music and art, like I always say that I'm going to do, yeah, having the ability to, you know, having searchable tags and all of that, and an archive and all that archive page, will make it a lot easier to gain access to those, to those things, or a lot easier for others to access them. And so that is honestly the biggest draw for me. But yeah. Mostly, you know, I'd always kind of wanted to use Tumblr over Twitter. I just sort of started using Twitter because I figured, you know, that's the thing that people use. But, and the, yeah, talk that I've seen of people migrating to, to Tumblr, as it were, uh, sort of reminded me, oh, hey, I have a blog, don't I? I can use that. But yeah. So among... That, and also the fact that it has, I'm pretty sure it does still have a word limit. I would assume that posts ha are, cannot be infinitely long. What? But it is uh, much more generous than, than Twitter has. 
And as we all know, as we know very well, my I'm not the greatest at being succinct. <laughs> and perhaps that is a skill that I should develop. But until such time, the ability to have a much more generous... Oh. Yeah, be much more generous... That looked very precarious there. Yes, the much more the much more generous character limit will be useful in conveying Whoop. ideas. Uh. Until oh dear. Uh. <clears throat> okay, okay. So let's be a little bit less reckless. I didn't intend to do that. I guess I don't know if that's recklessness or clumsiness. Uh. I suppose the I suppose the former leads to the latter. But, let's see. Can we... Whoop. Yes. Ugh. I maybe should have given that a little bit more thought to, but... This should be the end of the floating rock segment. Oh, no. And on to the stationary... Well, I guess there are... Everything in this game is stationary, more or less, except for myself. And a hat, and an orange, and a coffee cup. And a bucket, I suppose. But yes. You know, I always, I always tell myself, I always tell myself, I'm going to look back at my streams and sort of see what I was doing and see where I could have maybe done better when it comes to this game in particular. Uh, and then I don't. So we're kind of, kind of back to square one on this. Though I do remember, I sort of, the development or the, the latest strategy that I was going with was I wanted to try and use our climber's body weight to move the bucket in such a way as to enable us to jump easily onto that plank over on the left-hand side. Whoop. Hmm. That's certainly not how I was intending to do it, and it didn't work. So, we've got quite a bit more quite a bit more work ahead of us here. But anyway, Tumblr. So all of this is to say, you know, I have a Tumblr page. I have I did a little bit of work on it earlier. But, uh, yeah. It is not, there's not anything of note on it there yet. But I think, honestly, it is a, it is a, for me at least, it is a, it is a much more appealing platform just in terms of the, the way you are allowed to make posts and whatnot, and the way that you can Whoop. that you can navigate mm. logs and all that. Oh dear. But yeah. But yeah. I was never a huge. Ooh, that's quite a bit of a, quite a bit of a loss indeed. But yeah, I was never a huge fan of Twitter in general. Oh. I think that was actually probably our our biggest loss of progress so far. But yeah, I was never a huge fan of Twitter in general. Mostly in, mostly due to the, to the lack of e an easily accessible archive. Or, you know, basically just, once you get beyond a certain amount of time, like, post, finding a, a given post is an incredibly difficult ordeal. Yeah, unless you have it saved for whatever reason. There we go. I'm completely out of my element now. It's been so long since we've been down here. Probably three weeks? No. It feels it feels like it's been three or more weeks, but I don't think it's been quite that long. Oh. Oh. Alright. So, where was I? Tumblr, right. So anyway, Twitter. Uh, yes, Twitter. Yes, I was saying that I, I don't like... Uh, yeah, so it's harder to sort of keep track of posts on Twitter. Twitter's a much more, I would say, transient website. It's very much sort of focused, as a lot of social media is, on just sort of the what's happening now, what's the latest and greatest, and all that. But I am a person who is... I would say almost obsessive when it comes to when it comes to records of past events and such. But yeah, like it is 
I very much intend to, with very, very few exceptions, like there is only one stream that I've ever done that I do not intend to have a VOD of up for as long as is reasonably possible. Yeah, every other every other stream that I've done, I intend to keep, I intend to keep available for the viewing of the general public, for forever, however long it is possible for me to do so. But yeah, assuming that you know, YouTube and such remains in existence indefinitely, until the end of my lifespan at least. And after that, then it's out of my hands. So. But, anyway. So, I don't... I like to be able to... I like to at least have the option to... more easily go back and see old posts and whatnot. Especially, you know... You know, most of my posts are pretty non-unique. They are just me saying, we're going to be... in about 30 minutes, we're going to be playing such and such game. But, you know, with, with art and music posts... I would very much like to be able to, you know, have people be able to find any given work relatively easily, relatively quickly, and such. Which is, among, alongside the, the sort of, the serious anxiety, is one of the main reasons why I haven't, uh, haven't really pursued do, putting art on Twitter and such. I also haven't made a very very much in the in the time that I've been using Twitter actively but anyway so I think that's basically everything that that needs to be said with regards to Tumblr it's just sort of in general a platform that I think would be a lot better for the type of content that I like to that I like to produce the amount of words that I like to say the yeah the way I like to keep my yeah, keep my records available easily accessible indefinitely things like that so yes so that is the first topic that is the first topic and so the second topic is man that was a, a lot of progress we lost huh yeah very unfortunate yeah, I think I think I'm going at this a little bit too quickly. I've sort of uh yeah, I'm a little bit too playing a little bit too, I would say casually. And not be quite as focused as I as I might like to be. I guess in part due to the fact that I you know, normally when I play this game, I simply play it and if a uh. if a topic comes up while I'm playing it, if I think of something while I'm playing it then I will discuss that. Whereas today, I've gone into it with the with the expectation that I would talk about specific things. Which could be throwing me off a little bit. But oh well. So yes. That's topic number two. Yeah. Other than that, I've already forgotten the list, unfortunately. So, we're going to have to wing it a little bit. And if I don't say everything that I mean to say, I suppose I'll have, it'll be, it'll still be there next time. But, but, yeah. So I guess, like I said, the use of Tumblr in addition to Twitter as of right now is a, yeah, I don't know. I'm not using Tumblr just yet. I'm experimenting around a little bit with, yeah, experimenting around a little bit with the theme I've got to modernize it basically make it make it available or appropriate for my branding as it were no. more or less what? yes mm. let's see so that's that what? yeah what? pardon me right, I need to exercise a little bit more concentration right now Try to remember a little bit more. This is a fairly straightforward section, I suppose, so maybe I don't need to focus that hard. But, oh well. So, 
let's see. I guess other than that, I have continued to watch the Gundam show. Or the, the first... The, the first? No. The... Most recently, I watched the third episode of Gundam, of Gundam, The Witch from Mercury, the new Gundam series. Yeah, I continue to enjoy it. I continue to be reluctant to talk about it on stream because I don't want to spoil anyone unless I make this specifically a talking about Gundam stream. And, you know, have that be the topic with the expectation going into it that this would be a talking about Gundam stream. But, but yeah, anyway, the show's good. I like it. Yeah. There's a good uh, good fight scene. <clears throat> yeah, a lot of a lot of questions have been raised. A lot of questions have been raised, and I'm very interested to see what, what happens with that. But yeah, I also on a only very very vaguely related topic. I also watched the the first episode of the anime uh, "Do It Yourself!" exclamation mark. Yeah, uh, it's a pretty good show. Also, yeah, the main character is very is very dumb and and in a slapstick comedy sort of way. But yeah, um, yeah, pretty good show. Yeah, I got here in thirty three minutes. I did not get here in 33 minutes. I lost progress until I got here. This is the this is the fifth part of me playing this game. So I've been here in this game for mm, I want to estimate somewhere between 8 and 10 hours. Yeah, I've been playing this game for between 8 and 10 hours total. And I most very recently fell. Yes, part 6. Yep. Yes, also. Welcome Welcome, uh, uh McGee 87 Yeah, we recently fell. We ended the last part off with a with a big fall. And uh, we started this part off with another big fall. Losing perhaps the most progress that I've lost throughout this entire playthrough. But yes. But yeah, we're not off to we're not off to a great start, but we've had uh we've come back from worse, I think. The night is still young, as they say. Yes, welcome in, like I said. I hope you're doing well tonight. There's the orange. It, does seem that, it seems that we do interact with the orange. I think that, I don't know, I might have established that already. But, yeah, like I was saying, I hope you're doing well tonight. Yeah. Uh... Oh, no. Yes, anyway. Yeah, better in better in music side than climbing in weird mountain. Uh <clears throat> better in, in music side as in uh what do you mean? Yeah, four AM should go go to bed, not yet. Fair enough, fair enough. <sighs> yeah, this game. Uh yeah, I guess I'm I'm not sure what you mean by uh by music side. Yeah. Alright. So we need to be a little bit... A little bit focused for this. So pardon me if I'm a little bit more quiet than usual. There we go. Now, there we almost go. Angle yourself. And launch. There we go. Much better. Oh, but now I'm a little bit stuck. Read that information, artist, musician. Ah, yes, yes. I would like to. I would like to believe that I'm better at making music than I am at at climbing a weird mountain. Yes. No. But yeah, actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, you know, there's not a whole lot going on in this game. We used to have, you know, a lot of commentary. We stuck on this game pretty long to be here. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. So, like I was saying, you know, there hasn't been a whole lot of. You know, there used to be a fair amount of music and commentary from Bennett Foddy himself in this, uh, while we've been doing this. But that's not been such a thing for a while. So, in fact, why not take the opportunity to put in some music of my own? 
Yes. So this is, you know, a song that I composed. Whoops. Uh, a song that I have composed. Not one of the ones that's on my band camp. I guess I could I could put it on my band camp. Whoop. Might as well, maybe. But, but yes. <laughs> maybe for that matter, I could, I could, uh, yeah, spoke next time when you get over the orange wall. Yeah. Oh, no. We've been over the, the orange part before. We've been there. We've been we've been past the the floating rocks. We've been onto the bucket. Uh, we've been oops. We've been a ways. Yeah, this is just the the latest the latest no. fall. That was a quite severe one, quite severe one. Yeah, I was on bucket, but didn't beat the game. I did not. I mean, honestly, like I've probably spent. Upwards of 30 minutes or more on the bucket. Did I ride the snake? I did not ride the snake. Yeah, this is my first playthrough, but I do have some experience with this game from, you know, seeing clips of it being played and whatnot. So, yeah, I know that the snake is not good. I know that the snake is not good, so I've not ridden the snake. Oops. Yes. Anyway. Whoop. Yeah, where was I? Oh yeah. So yeah. Once once wall to wall from snake ride or fail. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. But like I was saying, you know, this is a, a song that I've composed that I've got playing in the background now. Yeah, I've got some other songs on my band camp. You can buy them if you so wish, or you cannot. You can you can download them for free um yeah it's available pay what you want but um yeah and as for art i also made drew and rigged my model here mm. i drew the the backgrounds oh. yeah my, all of my overlays and whatnot yeah most of them are placeholders that i've not had the time to do a proper design for this one's pretty okay, but we've got some some not so okay ones in the uh, in other 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 areas of the stream. Yeah, I do hope to uh. introduce some more permanent permanent assets here in the not too distant future. But yes. Oops. All right. So, like I was saying, yeah, music is kind of story type of music. I think I, if I think about a uh, game, nice and calming. Thank you. Yeah, that's sort of the the style that I go for. Typically, I try to, I try to go for, not always calming, but I like to try. Uh, that's more or less what it what I end up with most of the time. I also haven't done a whole lot of music work recently, but, but yeah, I like to, I like to, I like music that sort of tells a story, you know, that has a very definite sort of feeling to it that you can, you know, you can understand, you can get an, you can get a, you can understand what it, what the, uh, what it's about, you know, even without, uh, even without words or anything like that. You can get a you can get a feeling from it, you know. <clears throat> and of course, as a as a person who plays video games a lot and has been doing so for a long time, yeah, video games are definitely a major inspiration for me in terms of uh, the sort of music that I like and the sort of music that I make. Feels like music when I enter a store. Fair enough. I don't think I've ever heard anyone uh, describe it like that, but I I like it. I like the uh, cause yeah, it, you know, it's sort of a yeah, fan Final Fantasy type of games. Yeah, yeah, RPG music is definitely uh, one of my one of my biggest inspirations. Oh, no. But uh, but yeah, sort of what I went for for this music was a for this song in particular was a, you know, relaxing sort of, uh, you know, the sort of music like a song or like a shop theme 
that you can you could listen to for a long time and it's you know low-key not sort of uh not super high energy not uh not the sort of thing that you would uh you know get tired of necessarily it's sort of a very sort of atmospheric backgroundy sort of music Definitely could have caught myself a little bit better there. All right. So, once again, a little bit more cautious so that we can actually make it up here. You know, it's nice to be to be able to maintain a a brisk pace conversation at all times, but I would like to beat the game at some point in my life, so if I need to pause a few more seconds at a time, so be it. Alright. Alright. There we go. So, we're back up to this part, where our most recent fall was, or our most recent significant fall. Stopped playing this game about uh, one or two months ago. Alright, alright. Have you ever beaten it? For a chance? Yeah. Oh dear. Ah. A little bit overzealous there. Yeah, I got Golden Cauldron. I used about 50 hours. That's for beating the game a certain number of times, yeah? Yeah, I've also, I've heard of that, but I've never, I've never witnessed it myself. I don't know. I don't know necessarily that I intend to to play the game on stream for that long. I was sort of uh, perhaps I was I was over ambitious, but I was I was uh, I wasn't expecting it to to take six parts, possibly more. Uh, yeah, I was not expecting it to take as many parts as, as it has. I didn't expect that I would beat it quickly, but I I thought that I would have beaten it by now. Yeah, just beat the game 50 times to get that sweet golden cauldron. Gotcha. Oops. But yeah. So all, all in all, you know, this has been a pretty enjoyable experience, I've got to say. It's, uh, perhaps, you know. Yeah, it's a little bit, uh, maybe not super unusual, I guess, I don't know. But, uh, it's been, the game, playing the game has been pretty relaxing for me, to be honest. It's not, it's not the sort of game that I get frustrated. Funny watch your play style, it's more like my style. Hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, so it's, uh, like I was saying, this is not the sort of game that I, that I get upset at. There are definitely games that I do get upset at, in circumstances that I get upset at. But I feel like in a, in a game like this, isn't, again, isn't the sort of game that I get upset at. It's a... I tend to get more upset when I feel like sort of things are out of my hands when something something unexpectedly unfortunate happens. And to be fair, there's a lot of things that are unexpected and unfortunate, but you know, basically everything that happens in this game happens as a direct result of something that I did, you know. Everything is yeah, many players use so much power and movement and they fail badly. Yeah. I've sort of gone back and forth, I guess, on sort of using uh, a lot of power, using not very much power, and I'd like to think that I've found uh, too calm in this game, seriously. I'll take that as a compliment. Yeah, I like to, I like to think that, you know, I like to think that there is sort of a, uh, a place for very sort of calm and composed, well, I don't know. I don't want to. I don't know if I want to say calculated. Uh. <laughs> Certainly, that wasn't uh, very calculated. But uh, you know, oh. sort of. I think a lot of the, sort of the. I guess the mental image that I have when I think of most streamers is you know a very sort of hype, exciting sort of place. What? I like to think of myself as being sort of a calm and relaxing stream, in as much as it is within my power. Yeah, it's weird to see someone be so chill while playing this game. Yeah, like I said, that's sort of the 
that's sort of the energy that I like to that I like to bring here. That's sort of what I what I aim for. But yes. What was I what was I saying? I was saying something. And I think I was mostly just saying that, basically. Sort of explaining explaining why I, I aim for that. Yeah, anyway. I guess like I was saying, you know, this is not the sort of game that sort of I get I get upset at, at really. Because again, you know, everything that happens is yeah, pretty calm because you're kind of focused on what you're doing. Good to let steam out steam, some steam out sometimes. I mean, I don't disagree with you. I don't disagree with you, but like, I don't know, I'm not... I guess the best way I can think to put it is I'm just not, you know, building up a whole lot of steam in general, you know? I'm just kind of a... For the most part, I'm a pretty calm person in general. Calm and quiet. I'm... Honestly, I am less so... I am less so on stream than I, than I am just in my general day-to-day -day life. I try to be a little bit more animated and all that. But, uh... Yes. Uh. Alright. Yeah, so, but like I was saying, this isn't the sort of game that I get particularly upset at. I get upset more so when I feel like, you know, when I feel like I sort of expected something to go one way, and it didn't get, and it goes a bit different way. Or when I sort of, uh, I guess that's basically it, you know. But, you know, this is a game, going into it, I expected, you know, I expected to experience a great deal of difficulty, many failures, and all that. And, yeah, it happens in this game many times. Yep. Yeah, I expected to experience a lot of failures, and a lot of setbacks, and a lot of and a lot of, you know, frustration and all that. And because, you know, because of that, I sort of, I think, have, uh, you know, I expected to fail, and so when I do fail, it doesn't upset me too much. Yeah, an unexpected failure is more so, uh, more so the sort of thing that I get upset about. Yeah, probably the most upset that I've gotten on stream is uh, when I was playing, this would have been, I don't know, it was a while ago, but when I was playing the game Gunpoint, which is a sort of stealth puzzle platforming game, yeah, I was playing Gunpoint, and I, you know, I was very careful, I did a, uh, a pacifist run of the game, I didn't want to kill anyone, and I had thought, I, I had thought that I had gone through the whole game without, without killing anyone. Uh. But in the in the end, in the final, you know, at the end of game report of all the all your stats, all that you did, I end up with one kill. I end up with one kill, and I was very I was very confused as to where where that one kill had come from. And even and especially even to this day, even to this day, I'm not sure why why that happened. But uh, yeah, I got upset about that. I did get upset about that. Yeah, there have also been, you know, some, some less, yeah, some minor frustrations here and there. Like, uh, let's see. Now, honestly, it's it's hard for me to think of, think of many. It's hard for me to think of many. Yeah. By the way. Hmm? Yeah. So. Oh. All right. I think I'm going a little bit too quickly at that. I'm sort of striking against the rock with too much force, and that's knocking me away. Is that better to hang on that table? Hmm. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. Or do you mean the uh, the table that used to have an orange on it? Oh dear. Alright. Need to get myself reoriented. We're reoriented there. And pogo jump? Yeah. Okay, okay. Orange table. Okay, okay. Oops. Yeah. Oops. All right. Yeah. So just in general, you know, you have not done anything wrong here. But I just want to make sure that we understand ahead of time 
know, I tend to prefer limited help when possible uh, playing games. I like to sort of experience them and sort of try and figure my way through them on my own. Yeah, no issues here though. You know, this is an obstacle that I've feared, feared many times before. Yeah, hang left side of table and try to throw yourself up. Oh, there's a big chance you land on table. Smart thinking. Yeah, I was gonna say. Uh, so yeah, so you know, nothing. You've done nothing wrong, but uh, I don't know. Saying you've done nothing wrong, but yeah, if you don't already, so it's okay to share some tips. Exactly. That's exactly what I was gonna say. I was hesitating there because I started that that sentence off with "you've done nothing wrong, but," which made it sound a little bit like a, a like I was about to suggest that you did do something wrong. But uh, but yeah. So yeah, no no issue with sharing sharing advice for things that I've things that I've already cleared or anything that I specifically ask about. Yeah, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page there. Yeah, good to set set boundaries ahead of time and all that. Yes. All right. And up. Go a little bit slower. This has been a, a place that I'm fairly familiar with, so I've been trying to get through it somewhat faster than usual. And that's led to me slipping a lot. Let's well, not, ideally. Alright. And carefully does it. And up and over. Very good, very good. This should not be a fairly difficult ah. section. And then, yeah, you speak and stay calm as you are. Even if I do something really wrong and you say about that, I won't feel bad. That's good. Yeah. I try to be, you know, I try to be as, as gentle in criticism and correction as, as I can. All right, so we're back to the, the table with the oranges. One fewer now than before. And so hang off the left side. Yeah, hang off the left side. Oh. Yeah, I do. Hmm. That was that was almost a little bit too fast. There we go. Yeah, I was gonna say I do. This is a, a motion that I've uh, stream is lowering my stress level a lot. I'm very glad to hear that. Like genuinely, that is that is really nice to hear. Yeah, again. I, I like to, uh, yeah, I want to have a real calm, nice, you know, just a, a, the sort of stream that you can, uh, yeah, I really, like you said, a relaxing sort of stress lowering sort of stream. That's really one of my, one of my big goals here. All right. So. That was a very good tip on the on the table. Unfortunately, unfortunately, my true battle lies in the rocks. Yeah, went a little bit too quick, quick there. Ah, yeah, went a little bit too quick there, and we lost some more progress. But it's fine. This is a pretty pretty familiar section. Oh. That isn't to say that I can't still make mistakes, but pretty familiar. Mm. Oh Alright, so let's not get too comfortable. Whoop. Not get too comfortable just because I'm familiar with these obstacles. Mm. Yeah, like I like I was saying, a little bit too much familiarity. Whoop leads to me getting a little bit sloppy when I'm playing. And that's no good. That will lead us nowhere. Alright, so. Carefully does it. Paying attention to what you're doing. Acting in a very intentional manner. Clear the obstacles in the way that you know works. Don't just do whatever. Swing around. And Whoa. up we go. Whoop. 
That's a little bit precarious, but we... Ah, oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, pull my hair out today, fighting with some coding and software issues. Study again a little bit more, and I used over nine hours to set up my stuff so I can start that next course. So many little things need to be... Yeah, need to be ready for task on that course. Hmm. Yeah. I've done a little bit of, of software software work myself. Yeah, I, I was in... Uh, I went to college for video game design. <clears throat> Yeah, I I was mostly in the the art side of things. I did mostly uh mostly 3D art, but I I'm out of practice by about the three three or so years from now. So I couldn't really make much in really couldn't do a whole lot of 3D design nowadays very well. But uh, but yeah, I definitely have a little bit of experience with with programming and all that, and it is uh. It's pretty challenging. Yeah, probably the most ambitious thing I ever did in coding myself was I, I made uh. a program. Just a little, a simple little, uh, simple little thing in Ruby. It was the, the first sort of soft, or the first, uh, programming language that I learned other than sort of the very simple sort of like, you know, programs like Scratch are for you know, very, very elementary level <laughs> learning. Uh. Perhaps even literally a elementary level. But, uh, but yeah, so Ruby was sort of the first one that I, the first like more, I guess you could say serious programming language that I started to learn. And, and in it, I coded a little, a little program for generating character ideas for, for D&D &D and, and similar role-playing games like that. I've, got, I've been in this situation before, I think. I'm not I'm not sure how I got out of it. We did a couple games with Unity, small ones, and also some games with JavaScript and Python. Hmm. Yeah, I did. I did a little bit of Python. I've done a little yeah. bit of Python. And I've worked... I have worked with... Actually, well, I've imported assets into Unity. I wouldn't... I haven't, like, made anything with it to be honest i've imported assets into unity but other than that nothing much all right oh dear i think i feel like i'm reiterating a lot but i i think that again i'm going a little bit too quickly through a lot of these obstacles, or I'm trying to take them a little bit too quickly, because I'm, again, a little bit too familiar with that. I've stopped assuming that things will go wrong. Stopped assuming that things will go wrong, and so I rush, and that's no good. And so again, if I have to focus a little bit more, talk a little bit less, then so be it. Alright. So, break. We'll be defeated. Flip on. Swing around. There we go. Carefully does it. Because yes, a little bit more time here will save us a lot of time down the road. That weakness is our side. It can create, create many objects and model them, but I'm bad with... Yeah, bad with beautiful graphics. Yeah, nice vision about how uh, about things, but don't have skills to do them. Based on math, I'm good. Gotcha. But yeah. As for myself, coding is probably one of my bigger weaknesses. Uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know. I'm okay at it, but it's definitely not a thing that I enjoy very much. I enjoy art. I enjoy designing, coming up with ideas, and all that. But I don't, uh, I don't like the, the implementing them, I guess. That's where I sort of, uh, the big roadblock comes in. And in a lot of cases, that sort of final, final step is, is, uh, yeah, is where I, I struggle with the most in, uh, a lot of things. Yeah, just sort of executing on the ideas that I have. So, carefully, 
position yourself. Whoop. Jump. Catch. Whoop. Position again. Once again. Whoop. There we go. Uh. Position. Mm. There we go. Whoop. Jump. Yeah, just gotta be conscious of what I'm doing. Mm. Conscious of what I'm Whoop. doing. Not as conscious of what I was doing as I would have liked to have been. There we are. Oh, yeah. Math is something that I'm pretty okay with. I wouldn't say that I'm great at math. I'm perhaps a little bit a little bit above average for perhaps the the average Yeah. Or at least the average of people around my age that I know who don't do math, you know, don't do math for their, or don't do a whole lot of math just for work purposes or whatever, or as a hobby or anything like that. <clears throat> yeah, I have a, a slightly higher than, slightly better than average math skills, I would say. Math was a subject that I, that I, that I did enjoy a fair amount. Or at least it was one that I enjoyed more than most of the other subjects that I studied. Yeah, I like I like learning things that you know. I like learning things that uh, I like learning systems and things like that. In the sense of I like I like things that have rules. Let's see real quick. Yeah, I like I like things that have rules and work consistently according to said rules. And that's sort of why I like to to learn RPG systems as well. Tabletop RPG systems. And honestly, video game systems as well. Yeah, I like figuring out how things work and then applying that knowledge. All that sort of stuff it's very satisfying the learning process and then sort of the the moments where you where you realize that you you know you finally understand it, it finally starts to make sense to you intuitively yeah this this game could code this kind of game pretty fast yeah it's sort of uh it's definitely yeah it's a simple sort of game i remember we sort of uh i had a discussion in a previous previous getting over at stream where we talked about sort of the idea of simple yeah simple versus complex and uh difficult versus easy yeah it's a you know it is a game that is perhaps deceptively simple perhaps deceptively simple in its design you know there's not not uh you know not no complex graphics no complex uh systems you don't have to upgrade or anything there's very little very little dialogue things like that very little music the art assets are you know sort of salvaged from the wider world and all that but you know you get there yeah yeah it's been a little bit since we've been up here so I'm a little bit nervous for that reason, but I'm fairly confident still. Right, I think. Yeah, this is not going to go well. Ah. Yeah, focus, don't jump. Hmm. Well, maybe I should have read that a little bit sooner, but oh well. We can get back there before too long. Again, I do definitely need to. Honestly, I might. It might be. It might be better. It might be. Well, yeah. The more I practice, the better I will get at this game, of course. But uh, I was gonna say it might be. It might be better if I were to play this game more than once a week. Maybe do a little bit of practice, uh, or maybe a little bit of warm up at least. Because yeah, again, every every so often, it feels. Like I'm sort of slipping into 
the habit of just sort of, you know, oh, no. not really focusing on what I'm doing. Just sort of, you know, <clears throat> going through the motions a little bit in areas where I've been before because I assume, you know, I've been here before, I've gotten over this, I've gotten over this particular obstacle before, I can do it again, and then I don't really think about it so much. But, you know, I don't have that much muscle memory yet, you know, oh, no. as evidenced. Yeah, I can't simply expect things to work out. Oh. Yeah. Most of the part you can just move slowly. Yeah. yeah I sort of, uh, I guess, yeah, I did sort of make an effort to start moving a little bit oh. faster. Oh. I didn't. I initially moved quite slowly, but I figured, you know, we're not gonna. We're never gonna get to the end if I if I don't speed up a little bit. Yeah, get a feeling with hammer and turn yourself forward and yeah, forward and forward. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I did make a conscious effort or a conscious decision at one point to make a conscious effort, I guess, to speed up my movements. Because I felt I was moving a little bit too slowly. And so I guess I... Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've, I've sort of internalized that. I sort of internalized that over time. So now I sort of... My natural state has shifted away from moving slowly and into a, a little bit faster. And I've sort of, you know, going back and forth on... Yeah, been going back and forth just sort of over the, the course of this playthrough. I guess I probably don't need to jump up onto that, that point there. Yeah, sort of going back and forth over the course of this playthrough between making a conscious effort to move slowly. Yeah, while I try to move as slow as possible so I don't fall when I get to the stone wall. I mean, that's definitely a good idea. That's definitely something I should be doing. Yeah, you know, I sort of, uh, I guess I sort of fall into the trap of not really thinking of this or of thinking of this game just in terms of, you know, you either go slow or you go fast. Where, you know, it's not really that sort of that sort of game. Yeah. It's not really the sort of game where you can just pick a speed and just go at it, you know. Unless you are, you know, as practiced as a speedrunner or something like that, in which case you would always go fast. But but yeah, it's not just a game, it's not a game where you can just necessarily always move at the same speed, because there are obstacles where, you know, your momentum really matters, like where if you hit the ground, record is seven minutes, very impressive. Yeah, it takes a lot more time if you fall than if you just always move forward steady and slow. Yeah, don't have enough energy to try speed run because it's pretty hard. I can see that. I can see that. But yeah. But yeah, so like I was saying, there are a few obstacles I think that are handled a, a little bit better by going quickly, or at least the way that I play. I struggled with them more going slowly over them than I did going quickly over them. And, you know, that's, I guess it, yeah, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is, you know, there are some times where even, maybe not necessarily the obstacle itself, but just the circumstances, some parts need two to three fast movements. Yeah. 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 Some obstacles and some circumstances do require you to react quickly, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you, you always need to move quickly. Testing out my, this new technique here. Oops. Ah. No. There, I think I probably should have, uh, most of the game you don't need any fast movements. Yeah. There, I probably should have moved with a little bit more force. Whoop. Yeah, I don't know, it might have just been a, an issue of, of a poor angle. Whoop. Yeah, so there are some, you know, some points where you do need to react quickly in some points. Yeah, there are some points where you do need to react quickly, but that doesn't mean that you should always be trying to go as fast as you can. Again, unless you are speed running. 
in which case that's the whole point, but, you know, this is far from a speed run. We're not exactly strangers to, uh, the yeah, only fail on that throw was you hit the rock with a hammer. Hmm. Yeah, hammer positioning. I do, I don't pay a whole lot of attention, and I definitely should pay more. But a lot of the time, I don't pay a whole lot of attention to where the hammer is or where it's going to end up when I'm done with it. I just sort of, you know, make make a motion, make a motion, and then however, however I am versus the hammer that hit that rock, you land on the table if you fall. Hmm. Yeah, wherever the hammer ends up after I make the motion, that's just sort of where it where it ends up. I guess probably what I, I should do a little bit more than I do, which is to say I should do at all, because I don't do it at all, but, uh, you know, be mindful, sort of plan out my, where the hammer is going to be when I, you know, when I finish, finish the motion. Alright, and down and up. And over. Yeah. yeah. Circle rotation with the mouse. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So like I was saying, you know, there are parts where you need to go fast, parts where you don't need to go fast, and then there are some parts where you can sort of afford to go fast because you're not in any tremendous danger of, of failure. This is, of course, not a part where I should go fast really at all. Uh, other than any faster than I need to be to launch myself up, basically. All right. There we are. Okay, you can go slow, just turn yourself upward. And that was a little bit... Yeah, that was too much. Too much. Yeah, I think... Honestly, there, I think mostly the issue was that I sort of hesitated. I sort of, uh, I pushed myself a little bit with a little bit too much force, and then I sort of panicked. Zero jumps, yeah. Yeah, I pushed myself with too much force, and I panicked. And, uh, I didn't really know where to go from there. Yeah. So I end up... Speaking of jumps, that is a thing that I end up doing. Like those two, like those two really high hops that I just did. Like, yeah, I, I end up doing that a lot. I don't know. I don't know why. It's not a conscious decision that I'm making. Yeah, I, I very often will just end up launching myself very high for no reason. And it's Whoop. very Whoop. The worst part about it is that I. I don't know how I'm doing it, so that I so I can't like replicate it when I want to launch myself up very high in a straight line. Oh. All right, so I'm gonna play this calmly. This game is maybe four mechanics what you need to do for normal playing. Gotcha. Lower down. Hit real quick. That's it. Oh. Whoop, whoop, up. And lower yourself down. And whoop. away. Oh dear. Once again, a little bit careless with the hammer. Fortunately, we were able to recover from that pretty easily. But yeah, poor hammer position there. I caught on the... I was going to say on it, but I guess that's a, that's a roof. Yeah. Math helps a lot, know about friction, etc. Yeah, definitely... I guess one, uh, one thing that you might know as someone who's played this game quite a bit. Uh, do you know if different surfaces have like different amounts of friction? Because I feel like, it feels like some of them, some of them do. But I that might just be me assuming that they have different friction just based on what they look like. 
Yeah, metal is super high friction. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say. Um, yeah, I was going. Yeah, what I was going to say is, you know, there have been a lot of times in this game where I've had sort of where I've assumed that I had different amounts of friction on different surfaces, and I sort of wanted to again sort of confirm that that was in fact programmed into the game, and not just a, not a, yeah, ice is slippery, yeah. I wanted to confirm that that was actually programmed into the game and not just me assuming something based on real world knowledge. Uh, not just assuming something based on world, real world knowledge. Snow is slippery, but also high friction, depends on how you go. Gotcha. Yeah, rock is pretty high friction also. Mm -hmm. All right, there we go. Don't need to jump after this first throw. No jump. Hmm. All right. For now. I guess... Bring yourself forward. I guess I did... I kind of forgot that you can just, like, pull yourself up. Yeah, place your hammer forward. Yeah. <laughs> I did... I honestly completely forgot that this was an option. <laughs> no wonder I've been having so much trouble for so long. like a small angle change. Yeah. All right. All right. I yeah, need to be, cl be closer a little bit. Yeah. Apologies if I'm not super timely on the messages. I'm sort of shifting my attention back and forth. So like I was saying, I did I did genuinely forget that I could just do that. That I could just pull myself pull myself around with the hammer. I'm s I've gotten so used to just jumping. Just jumping everywhere that that's just sort of what I what I do. But yes, thank you very much. Yeah. Losing my mind with this wall before I learned to calm down. Gotcha. So, with a little bit of caution, we pull ourselves up, and we get our hammer stuck a little bit. Yeah. In this game, sometimes you need to jump and be calm, etc. Yeah. It's learning sort of the difference between those. Can I come to rest on this? Yes, I can. Oh. Come is hard. Yeah. Alright. There we are. Are the bats going to come out again? No. Just once per session, it looks like. Of course, once we get to the anvil, then there's going to be the bat present, I think. But, I wonder... Yeah. I wonder what it is that causes that to spawn. Like, what the trigger is for it. Because it doesn't... It doesn't... It's also a thing that only spawns once per, per session. And we were there at the anvil before to this before on this day and we didn't see it then so I'm not sure again I'm not sure what that's about yeah I think it's timer if you stop playing it will reset hmm. gotcha yeah now that I've now that I've been reawakened to the possibility of sort of walking myself around Orange comes back in the hat, etc. Yeah. Yes. Now that I've been reawakened to the possibility of simply pulling myself around with my with the hammer, I kind of want to practice that a little bit more. And as much as I, I can. There we go. This is... I think this is a point where I do need to jump, though. If I'm not mistaken. So, actually... Need that skill later in the game. Gotcha. Yeah, no need? Hmm. Oops. Alright, get a little bit closer, maybe. Um, maybe, maybe a little bit further away. 
But yeah, I need to get a good about six ways to do this. Hmm. Gotcha. All right. This hmm. jumping is easier. Maybe depends on how steady your hand is. My hand is decently steady. This does frighten me a little bit. I'm feeling pretty well, but I feel like I'm gonna lose. Yeah, I'm gonna lose traction. Yeah, I need to be closer to the right wall. Mm, okay. <laughs> Like on that right wall. Hmm. Oh, do I? Oops, come on. Yeah, caught at a 45 degree angle. Hmm. Yeah, 45 degrees right from like, assuming that this is like zero degrees, like 45 degrees right or 45 degrees left. I guess, well, I don't know. I'm trying to think. Um, uh, okay. Yeah, like that? Okay. So, we've had decent success jumping this. So, if, if this takes a while longer, I might just jump. Hard to find the correct movement to do it that way. Gotcha. Up here. Let's just this one. This one's probably a lot faster than just jump over. So we're just gonna jump over it. Yeah, this is one that I had difficulty. We've, we're, we've done okay at jumping over it, but I feel like we could probably do a little, a little bit more. Do it a little bit more consistently. Yeah, when you when you learn, you can always do it. Yeah, I was gonna say this is this is the sort of thing that I feel like would be consistent. Oh dear. Yeah, sort of getting myself up, getting myself up that I feel like I'm struggling with. Because yeah, whenever the when the you know we get past the sort of edge of the hammer. I feel like then I sort of, I always like lose my place. I sort of, my theory there was that maybe if I pull myself a little bit faster, I could get up without losing, yeah, get up without losing too much, yeah, losing my grip. But it uh, didn't quite go the way I had planned. All right, so yeah, lost friction. If you if yeah, if it turns even a bit down, gotcha. Yeah, that's sort of what I was thinking. But I was yeah, wondering if I could maybe work around that. Yeah, I think I'm getting I'm pulling myself too far up. I think is the issue is that I'm losing I'm losing the good forty five degree angle. I'm getting too, uh, going too far, going too far clockwise. All right. Well, actually, I'm not sure what to do from here. Because, hmm. yeah, I don't, I don't see how to just slipping when you wave it up and down. Mm. Yeah. Um, hmm. I don't know. Maybe my hand isn't quite as steady as I as I thought it might be. All right, 45 degrees. That's not quite 45, but it's good enough, I think. Losing where it looks good. Yeah. Lost a little bit too much height there, I think, though. 
Yeah, just need to turn yourself around the hammer. Okay. Yeah, that's sort of what I was debating. Whether whether I... Oops. Yeah, maybe add a little bit of speed. Uh, and reach when you're a bit higher. Okay, okay. Because, yeah, I was starting to... Like you said, I was sort of starting to suspect... Ooh, that was a little bit a little bit faster than maybe I should have. Oh dear. Yeah, I'm starting to suspect that I was Yeah, that I was going at this too slowly and I needed to swing around with more force. Whoop. Uh, that was a little bit too much speed, or at least too much not the right yeah, it just wasn't going out that right, I don't think. That was pretty promising, but it wasn't. It didn't, it didn't work, so there's the issue. Friction is really slow. Mm. Alright. Yeah, nine, uh, nine o'clock. Mm. Alright. So try to get myself to nine o'clock or to. Uh, doing this right. Hold on. <laughs> Forgot what I was doing there. Yeah, you were hanging on the rock. Okay, okay. Alright. So, swing over just a little bit. Need to go a bit slowly. Okay, well. Yeah, I needed to pull up a little bit there. I was getting caught on the rock, I think. I wasn't moving. Yeah, turn pot on nine, then try to add a bit, a bit of speed. Okay. Uh, whoops. Left, and then up a little bit. Up a little bit. Ah. Yeah, if you pull yourself close to the rock, you can push your hammer forward so you can reach that snow area with higher friction. Ah! Okay. Because, yeah, I've been... Yeah, I didn't know that I could push here. I guess it makes sense. You know, it doesn't have infinite friction. Makes sense if I can if I can if I can fall down, I can get forward also. Alright, alright. See that angle, yeah. Move over. Up. Not bad, not bad. Close. Whoop. Ah. <clears throat> Went too far down. Went too far down and I lost uh I lost my grip. Yeah, I've been nice spot multiple times, but it's hard to choose in this correct time to do the next step. Yeah. Yeah, there I think it was just an issue of I I should have pulled the hammer up a little bit. Whoop. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, I'm sort of uh yeah, hard to be gently because if you hit that, it'll make you jump. Yeah, I'm sort of pushing into the rock when I'm when I'm doing this. I'm pushing into the rock, and when I push into the rock, obviously the rock's not going to move, so I move. Whoop. Yeah, sort of. Uh... I guess sort of the issue is that my hand sort of instinctively returns to sort of a, whoops, as evidence there, my hand sort of returns to, uh, instinctively returns to, uh, I get a little bit higher if you want to try to reach, okay, okay, yeah, my hand sort of instinctively tries to return to sort of the center of my mouse pad, sort of a resting position, uh, and when I do that, you know, it throws me off a little bit, and jump from that rock in front of you, yeah. I know that I can. I just figured that since we've since we've uh, since I've been practicing climbing techniques, I might want to try that again. But okay. only in close. Right. Maybe not. Maybe we'll just jump. Yeah, I mean that uh, that what is below of you eight at the moment. Like on the rooftop. Uh, or wait, I can. 
You don't mean that I can jump from the rooftop, right? That's, that would be a, a big jump indeed. Jump from from there. Oh, okay, okay. Onto that, onto that rock. Okay, onto the outcropping. Yes, I thought you meant that I could jump all the way from here to the snowy area, and that's why I was confused. Yes, I get you. I get you. All right. That wasn't that wasn't going anywhere, except for down, I suppose. Mm. I don't know. I kind of want to just jump some more. I kind of want to just jump because it, that's worked in the past. Yeah, you know, the pot is on the roof. You reach that dark rock and do a perfect job. Oh, do you mean like? Jump from here onto the dark rock and then up the all the way up the cliff. I suppose maybe I should have maybe I should have uh, clarified whether it's on a rock. Hmm? Uh, yeah, when I was saying rock, I mean like this this that I'm up against right now. Is this not a rock? That. Mm. Yeah, small dark. Because yeah, when I'm when I'm when I say a rock, I was referring to this thing that I'm striking my hammer against right now. Small dark. That. Mm. Yeah, I assume we're we're on the same page here now. Okay. 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 So that is or isn't a rock? Hold on. That's what I mean. Okay. Take a sip, real quick. Sit. Yeah, it looks great if you can throw yourself all the way up. It probably would, yeah. So hard, I can, I can imagine. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's hard enough for me, harder than this, yeah. It's hard enough for me to, to throw myself up there from here. Again, because I think, yeah, I'm positioning. I've learned this lesson before. The easier way is just pogo jump and reach the snow part. Yeah. Yeah, the lesson that I've learned previously is that if I position myself too far to the right, then when I try to launch myself up, I'll deflect off the rock and bounce to the left. Let's not do that. There we go. Almost lost it there. But uh, as it turns out, when you think about things, and you remember how you did them successfully before, you are able to solve the problems without excess stress. Had a super slippery? Yeah. Not surprising. There we are. Not too bad, not too bad. I mean, well... Honestly, pretty good. Pretty good for for my usual track record with that obstacle. Let's see, can I? Maybe if I, yeah, could add extra stress when you know how it should work, but it just not doesn't work. Yeah. Oops. Hmm. I'm not. I've been on some pretty precarious angles before. I think I can. Well, maybe not like that, but we do now have a grip on this upper section, so I guess we more or less have solved that. Oh, thank you for the follow. Also, I guess one thing I, I do want to ask real quick. Uh, what, how do I pronounce your, your name there? Is it uh, Magee? Yeah, Magee87? Nope. Uh, mage, perhaps? Something like that? Nope. Or I guess, you know, just how do you, how how would you like to be addressed is perhaps a, a better question. 
because I've sort of been I've been I've been sort of thinking over how I should uh, how I should pronounce that. Oh dear, that was entirely too reckless of me. Got distracted. Yes. So let's use our brain, the knowledge that we have acquired over countless falls. Yeah, if you know how to say it, like a way. Yeah, if you know how to say it like a way you read it. Hmm. Let's see, I think, yeah, I can sort of, uh, this should be an okay position. I could maybe be a little bit further right. And I could maybe launch myself a little bit straighter up instead of a little bit to the left, but maybe I should have been closer. That's too close, I think. This should be okay. Whoop. No, yeah, I launched myself, launched myself a little bit too far left again is the issue. Yeah. How you say, how you say mama? I guess, as I just said it, basically. Starts like ma. Okay. So ma. Maji. Or. Uh, Alright. I did this once really, really cleanly. <laughs> I did this once really cleanly, and now I now I can't remember precisely what I did to accomplish that. To, if I try to go any further right, if I try to lean any further right, it, uh, if I try to go any further right, it will, I can't, basically. So I think that's about as far right as I can get. Hmm. Using my grip here a little bit, I think. Let's reposition. I might be overthinking this, to be honest. Or maybe not thinking this enough. Mm. Mm. Alright. So yeah, and first part was correct and ends like G uh genetic. Okay. So Maji. Okay. Gotcha. Pretty close? Ah, should I hold the, the E a little bit longer, as implied by the two E's? Maji? Maji? Or, yeah, Maji. Alright. Yeah, need to be more clear, kind of. Yeah, pronunciation or my position here? Hard, hard to people who speak English. Gotcha. Fair enough. Yeah, Maji. 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 Hmm. Yeah, from Finland. Ah, nice. Gotcha. Yeah, not familiar, not familiar with the Finnish language, I, I will admit. The closest geographically, I guess, is that I, I have a friend who I who is from Norway, but I don't know. I don't sp speak much Norwegian with me, given that I don't speak Norwegian. So, so I guess I'm I'm not really that close to having any understanding of Finnish I, either, even just from a near neighbor. Yeah, Norway is hard. Fair enough. We have landline with Norway. Gotcha. 
Yeah, I know, uh, yeah, this, this friend of mine, this friend of mine, I know, uh, very specifically, uh, does not use their, you know, their birth name, the name that they, that they have, uh, in Norway, doesn't, doesn't use that name with us, uh, their, their American friends, uh, doesn't use that name with their, their American friends because they, they don't want to, uh, don't want to hear us pronouncing it, uh, poorly as we might be inclined to. Yeah, I've only, only ever, only ever seen that, that name once, uh, in the entire time that I've known them. And, uh, I did not, I did not make an effort to, I did not try to pronounce it because I knew that they, however I pronounced it would probably not be pleasing to their ears. So I did not, I did not speak it. It was something like this, wasn't it? I think that was how I was last time. Hmm. I might need to... I might need to... Hmm. I guess maybe, yeah, speak same, how, same way how we write. Yeah. Um... Art. Too many... Too... Too much, uh... But... <laughs> yes. I am... My mind is full of too many thoughts of how to, to clear this obstacle to, to come up with a coherent response. But, uh... Okay. Yeah, speak, speak same way how we write. Uh, is that, uh, speaking, referring to, uh... Yeah, specifically the, the Finnish language? So yeah, I've got to say... Uh, I am, I do have a, a, an interest in languages. I like, uh, I like learning about languages. I would like to learn another language. I've, uh, I've put in an effort here and there. Yeah, it's kind of a simple to read. Hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say, the only, the only language that, uh, I've really put in a, a serious effort to learn over, over my years, other than, I guess, English, which I'm speaking now. But uh, the only effort that I've really put in a serious, uh, I say effort that I've put in, the only language that I've put a, a serious effort to learn. Yeah, whole bonfire together in sweet in Finnish is, uh, koko koko koko. That's probably probably not too close, but <laughs> yeah, koko koko koko. Pretty good. Thank you. I will I will take that as a as a something of a victory. Yeah. So as I was uh, as I was saying, the only language that I've put in much effort to learn uh, has been Japanese, which I've not practiced in a very long time, and I never reached a very good level with it. Just a very basic, a very basic grammar, and uh, a few words that I could string together. So yeah, so I can, I can pretty, pretty well intuit how a Japanese word is pronounced. Yeah, I think I want, want, I think I remember how to ask, do you wear underwear? That's not a, that's not a question that I, that I would be able to ask in Japanese. But, uh, I remember the, the first, the first, uh, Ooh. Japanese, yeah, I assumed as much. Yeah, the first the first phrase, the first sentence that I that I put together sort of on my own time. Uh and I can't oh oh dear, now that I now that I think about it, I can't remember how to how to say it. Um Yeah. Oh dear. Uh, I've forgotten I forgot the first sentence that I that I formed. Yeah, I remember the the first the first sentence that I that I ever formed in Japanese, sort of outside of the, you know, the sentences that I would read for my lessons and all that. The first, the first one that I came up with, uh, just based on my knowledge of the, the grammar and of the words that I had, was, uh, uh, do you eat cars? Or, you know. That was the, the first sentence that I, that I came up with in, J in Japanese. 
and I was very proud of myself for uh, for independently putting the putting the pieces together to be able to construct that sentence. in Asian culture, but I've only been to Singapore. You know, I've not done I've not done a whole lot of traveling myself, or at least not uh I haven't done any I haven't done any international traveling. But yeah. And I guess I haven't done a whole lot of domestic traveling either. Yeah, I live in the, the United States here. But uh I've been to I've been to sort of a yeah where do I live? I live in the United States, like I like I said. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I will say I live in the Midwest, but I don't want to, you know, privacy and all that. I don't want to go too much into detail. But yeah, so I live in the United States, in the Midwest. Uh, and I've been to. I've been as far as the Pacific Northwest, and as far as the sort of. Uh, I guess. Yeah, to as far as like Florida the other way. So I've been I've been across the the span, roughly, of the continental United States. But I've not uh I haven't been to a lot of the and I've been, you know, I live in the middle of it. But I've not been to a lot of the places sort of in between, except just in terms of uh if I had if I stopped there for a during a yeah, about six years ago in Florida. Yeah, how'd you like it? I imagine it's a very different climate. I understand that Finland is pretty cold. I guess sort of the, you know, I think, yeah, the, I don't know. I guess my, my knowledge of geography is not, uh, yeah, I don't speak Spanish. Yeah, my knowledge of geography is not as, as good as it might be. So we were a little bit in the wrong area. Yeah. I know that that Finland and all that and all of those uh, the Nordic countries are pretty pretty far north but I don't know how far north any of them are relative to each other nor uh, what the sort of average temperatures would be in any of them all I know is that they are north relative to to me basically how far north mm, who knows? But they 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 are north. That much I can that much I can say conclusively. Yeah, let's go into the Caribbean. Yeah, Caribbean clue. <laughs> Let me take that again. Yeah, we were going to a Caribbean clue. Man, that is a unusually difficult sentence for, sentence for me to form. Going to a Caribbean cruise. There we go. I was in Florida a couple of weeks. Gotcha. Yeah, I did. I did used to live in Florida. I used to live in Florida for for a few years. I lived in Florida for a few years, and I I did not like it. I did not like it at all. But I am I'm definitely not a. Yeah, I am not a. I can't say Caribbean. It's impossible for my tongue. Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean. <laughs> I, it was only with great effort that I was able to say, even say the word cruise, so we've all got our, all got our shortcomings here and there. But yes. Uh, but yeah, I very much didn't like, uh, I didn't like the, the Florida climate because I'm, I'm definitely a, I'm a person who appreciates the winter. It's, uh, I like, I like the cold, I like the snow. I don't like I don't like humidity and all that. And moreover, I have uh, I have some fairly significant allergies, so I don't like the fact that there are sort of yeah. Welcome to Finland. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. But, uh, but yeah, I especially don't like the the fact that there's like you know a lot of plants that are sort of you know active year round in uh, in Florida because again I have. Pretty bad allergies. I guess I don't think they necessarily bloom all year round, but 
any any given plant is far more likely to be putting off pollen or anything like that at any given time in Florida than say here in the Midwest in the middle of the middle of winter. Yeah, I don't know why, but I'm allergic in summer in Finland, but other countries I don't experience allergies. I've had a fairly similar experience. Like, um, yeah, back here in my in my home, in my home region, I experience allergies pretty pretty badly during the spring and summer. In Florida, I had allergies again worse during spring and summer, but present during all seasons. And during the time that I've spent in the Pacific Northwest, I've not, I'm, I've hardly experienced allergies at all. Yeah, I was feeling so good when I was in the U.S. Gotcha. Yeah, in the Pacific Northwest, I, I, I've never really experienced any allergies at all. I wonder, yeah, I wonder what it is that I'm allergic to that's here. Yeah, travel because it's a way to relieve my stress level. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't know what it is that I'm allergic to that's here and in Florida, but not in mm. not in the, mm. the Pacific Northwest, apparently, or at least just not the parts of it that I have been in. Can't let stuff go if I'm not far enough away from everything. Gotcha. I gotcha. Physical distance and emotional distance and all that. Makes sense. Yeah, I'm definitely... I don't see myself as much of a traveling person. I sort of, I like to be in other places, but I don't, I don't like the process of traveling. Yeah, I don't like, uh, I don't like so much, uh, that could have been pretty good, I think, but unfortunately I, I sort of misplaced the hammer. Teleporting is your thing? Basically, yeah. I'd really, I would, I kind of would like to, if I could just, you know, if it were a, a thing that I could do, I would like to be able to just teleport to two places. Because yeah, I don't. I do like I do like uh, planes to a certain extent. Yeah, I kind of enjoy traveling. Yeah, like I enjoy planes to a certain extent. I like flying a little bit because I like sort of I like I like the view. But you know, hang around London Airport for nine hours. Hmm. Yeah, so I like to... It was painful, but also pretty fun. Fair enough. I wonder I wonder what the... If there's any sort of consensus on what the most comfortable airport in the world is. That seems like a topic that people would, would get into heated debate over. At right, that time I didn't reach out far enough, I don't think. Yeah, I was going to say, that seems like a topic that people would get into heated debate over. What is, what is the most comfortable airport to be in? And there's definitely there's definitely going to be a lot of people with a lot of opinions if, if that was a, a topic of discussion. <laughs> yeah. So I like I kind of I like the part of a plane ride where I look out the window and I can see you know all sorts of sights that I that I can't from you know the, from on the ground seeing cities at night just wide open spaces and stuff like that yeah, Heathrow in the UK is the is that your uh, is the best airport gotcha gotcha just what I was gonna ask but um yeah big lots of stuff to do that sounds fun yeah so like I was saying you know, I like sort of seeing the Seeing, seeing things from a new perspective in a very literal sense uh, in a plane. But other than that, you know, the rest of the experience of being in a plane is pretty... Yeah, you can, you can eat so many types of food to travel because I love food. That makes sense. I get that. I get that. I can understand that. I like to try different things, too. Mm. Yeah, so like I was saying, I like the sort of... the different perspective from being in an airplane, but the rest of the, yeah, only, only thing I like in the plane is gin and tonic. Fair enough. Yeah, I don't drink myself, so that is not a thing that I, that I experience, but, but yeah. Yeah, I like, I like the, the view, but I don't like, 
basically any other part of the, the plane experience. <laughs> Only take uh, take only one every time when I fly. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Habit tradition, sort of. All right, I got it. Man, I did this in like one try. <laughs> I did this in one try when I when I tried to do it that first time, but then but now I. Cannot replicate it for the life of me. Well, we almost, we almost did. Yeah, don't drink, don't drink very often. That's fair. That's fair. I'm definitely, I'm not the sort of person to, who thinks that, uh, like some draft beers and some wine with food. Yeah, I'm definitely not the sort of person who thinks that. Uh, yeah, I definitely, you know, I do believe that you can, you can definitely drink responsibly and all that, and it's not inherently a, a wrong thing to do, but, you know, just not, not a thing that I'm interested in, in any capacity, really. Yeah, I like to drink for taste, not alcohol. I, I get it. I can, yeah, I can understand that. But, I don't know, for me, I have a, I have a very low tolerance for, uh, I have a very low tolerance for, for bitter flavors. So I don't think it'd be, there wouldn't be a lot that I would enjoy. There's definitely some things that I could probably, but I don't know that I'd really want to go out of my way to, to do so. What I like in terms of drinks is I like I like I like flavored lemonades. That's sort of my if I'm if I'm going to treat myself to an to a to a nice drink, basically it's just lemonade that doesn't taste entirely like lemonade. Lemonade with with some I don't know, most most often strawberry in it, because I like strawberry quite a bit as well. Yeah, strawberry lemonade, pink lemonade sort of things. Oops. Ah. I suppose I could probably experiment around with different, uh, because, you know, you could just, they, they have all sorts of flavors that they put into different drinks, like Dr. Pepper. I do too. I do too. Honestly, if I were to, if I were to rank drinks, if I were to rank beverages that I like, probably strawberry lemonade would be number one, Dr. Pepper would be number two, and then regular lemonade would be number three. But the it's a very close between number number two and number three. Yeah, I don't like I don't like bitter, but I do like I do like sour quite a bit. I like sour candy. I like sour sour lemonade. Sour sour and sweet I think is a is a very good combination. Mm. Ah. Alright, so, we go again. I feel like there must be something, well, I was gonna say, I was gonna say that there is something, there must be something that I'm doing fundamentally wrong, but we did get pretty close there not too long ago. We did get pretty close there. Yeah, like drink uh, mocktails or lemonades with like pina colada, uh, pina colada pineapples and coconut. Coconut. I, I like the I like the taste of coconut. I've got yeah, Coke is always good with ice. I've got to say I don't I don't like uh, I don't like Coca Cola or Pepsi very much. I don't like uh, cola drinks. I like Dr Pepper, but I don't like colas. And I I feel like a lot of people confuse uh, Dr Pepper for being a cola a lot, but it is it is not. It has a different it has a very different taste profile. They just sort of, I think a lot of people just sort of don't know that cola, kind of cola, it's not, it's not really, because like, the term cola comes from, like, the fact that it, part of the flavor is derived from the cola nut, but I don't think that Dr. Pepper has any cola nut flavor in it, so I don't think it's a cola, 
like it has a it has a similar sort of color it has a similar color and, a, and it does have a it's similar in some respects in flavor but it doesn't have the it doesn't have cola in it you know it doesn't have the cola flavor in it so it's not a cola would you say it's like a root beer I don't I don't know what a I don't know what precisely defines a root beer actually now that I think about it I know that Dr. Pepper isn't cola in the sense that it doesn't have it doesn't have the specific flavor of the cola nut but I don't know that it, I don't know what makes a root beer a root beer per, per se oh nice there we go let's let's not sit on the hat I feel like that's a disaster waiting to happen but yeah yeah, feel some root beers feel pretty similar, similar to Dr. Pepper. Fair enough. I don't I don't drink a lot of root beer. Honestly, I don't drink a lot of. Uh, mostly, I drink water. I drink water, and again, I drink lemonade and I drink Dr. Pepper, and I don't drink a whole lot else. I guess I do drink. Uh, uh. I drink milk, but not often. Yeah, I don't have many root beers around here. Fair enough, fair enough. I don't... I don't like most root beers, or at least I haven't... I haven't liked most root, root beers that I've tried. I've had... I've had a few that have been quite good. I remember there was a... I worked at a restaurant once. I worked at a restaurant once, and they, uh... Yeah, water with bubbles is what I drink most of the time. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so I worked at a restaurant once, and they had a... There was a root beer that they served there that I enjoyed, but other than that, I don't think I've I don't think I've had a root beer that I've enjoyed. And I don't I don't remember what they served there, unfortunately. You could probably find out. The restaurant still exists, but and then it definitely wasn't you know some sort of special in-house blend of root beer, home-brewed root beer, if you will. It was just you know it was a commercial product. But I just, uh, yeah. Whoops. Whoops. Yeah. Where was I? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Water. Water is what I drink most of the time. I drink lemonade when it's available. I drink Dr. Pepper when it's available. I say when it's available as though they're rare. I can't stand LeChuck's. I know LeChuck can't stand root beer played Monkey Island. I have not played Monkey Island actually. I think I might have a Monkey Island game. I think I might have one, but I've never I've never played any of them. What? No. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, I don't know enough about about Monkey Island. I should try that out. I do definitely want to one of these days. I do want to try out a sort of point-and-click adventure game like that on stream. I've got... I have quite a few of them. Yeah, solve puzzles and funny stories and jokes. I do like... I do like solving puzzles. And I do like funny stories and jokes. But yeah, I do... In, I do imagine I'd enjoy it. Just not, uh, you know... No. Not something I've taken the time to do just yet. No. Yeah. So, yeah... I do drink milk sometimes, but I'm very, I'm kind of picky about the milk that I like because I don't like, um, I don't like the taste of milk fat. I don't like the taste of milk fat, so I pretty much only drink, uh, skim milk, fat-free milk. Like, I don't, um, I don't, I can, 1% milk is okay. And, oh dear, ah, uh, I got a, I got too, too ambitious there. Yeah, 1% milk is okay. 2% milk is not very good, and whole milk I really, really don't like. Ooh, that was very, very close there. Yeah, I think my stomach doesn't like milk, but it's also good if I eat something greasy food. But yeah, my stomach is fine with milk, but I don't, uh, I just don't like the taste of it, broadly speaking. Yeah, I do like the taste of skim milk. So again, it's just sort of the it's the it's the fatty part of the milk that I don't like. 
<sighs> that three milk tastes, tastes perfectly fine to me. It's the, it's the fat that I don't like. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, related, I also don't like butter very much. Concept of infinity. Hello. We have, uh, we have a very big guest here today. But yes. Thank you for dropping in. We are discussing, we are discussing our thoughts on various drinks, in particular right now, milk. Do you eat meat? I do eat meat. Yeah. I'm not, uh, you know, I d I'm not opposed to drinking milk. It's just, you know, I don't, uh, I don't like, uh, the taste of it, basically, is the whole, is the thing. I don't like the taste of butter for, uh, you know, the same reason. But yeah, I do, I do eat meat. Um, yeah, in terms of meat, I, I most like chicken. Chicken is the, is the meat that I like the most. I'm also quite fond of fish. Uh, and sort of pork and beef Ugh. in that order. I haven't, let's see. No, I have, I have had lamb. I like milk, just like in cheese form way more. Gotcha. Yeah, I've had, ooh. There we go. I've had, yeah, shrimp and crab meat is good. Oh yeah, Ugh. shrimp and crab, yeah. I like, I like those quite a bit, yeah. Yeah, I guess when I say fish, I sort of, I mean broadly, more broadly seafood. Whoop. Yeah. Yeah, one thing, one thing that I did prepare, I was just re just remembered, I had a list of topics that I wanted to talk about today, and one of them is that oh. I had, uh, I tried some, some squid today. Seafood is good? Yeah. Yeah, I tried a uh, squid today, uh, a, a squid and ink sauce. Yeah, it was just, uh, nothing, nothing too special, it was like in a, in a can. I heated up in the microwave and it was okay. Yeah, two cheese boards, a gourmet cheese knife, and a book just on just cheese. Ah, so you are you are very serious about your cheese. I can respect that. Tip. Yeah. I'm not a huge cheese fan, to be honest. I like um mostly I like sort of white cheeses. Most sort of yellow cheeses I don't uh I'm not hugely fond of. I don't like cheddar and such very much. Squid is good, but it's hard to cook. Yeah, I've uh, the best the best squid I've had was in is in sushi, which I guess sort of bypasses the hard to cook problem by making it not be cooked. But uh, but yeah, I definitely didn't. Uh, this this squid that I had, I did just sort of I put it in the microwave for a little bit and uh, just sort of heated it up without thinking too much about it. So it didn't turn out as well as it could have. Yeah, best squid was in some some Chinese restaurant. Gotcha. Yeah, the squid I had didn't turn out super great. It tasted fine, but it was a little bit chewy. It was also a little bit salty, but I guess that canned food tends to be pretty salty for to preserve it. Duck was also great on that place. I've never had duck, to be honest. Yeah, I've had. You know, I've had chicken, I've had turkey, but I've not had duck. Yeah, I believe you mean less sharp or complex cheeses such as Swiss, Parmesan, Chuck, Provolone. I think so, yeah, probably. Because, yeah, I don't, uh, have I tried kangaroo? I have not tried kangaroo. You know, that's the sort of thing. Clearly, you know, I'm sure basically every animal on Earth, every animal on Earth that and a human has eaten at, at some point, probably, unless we haven't discovered it yet. But, uh, yeah, I guess it didn't, it didn't occur to me the idea of people eating uh, a kangaroo before. Yeah, I believe two cheeses that you'd like are feta and monster cheese. I think, I think I've had feta before, and I think, I think I enjoyed it. But yeah, so I think probably, yeah, the problem, the thing I, I think probably I was just lacking the vocabulary to describe what sort of cheeses I do and don't like. Yeah, China, they eat, they eat kittens. I probably wouldn't wouldn't want to do that necessarily. I ate a couple of weeks ago. I ate, ate, yeah, a couple of weeks ago. I ate a kangaroo burger. That sounds like an interesting experience. I've got to say. But yeah. So back on the topic of cheese. Yeah, I think probably you know, all all my life, I didn't like a, you know, most of the time. Very frequently here in America, we will be served just like, you know, American cheese. If there was a PhD in cheese, I'd have it. 
I admire the dedication. Yeah, you know, here in America, a lot of the time, people plan on going to culinary school. Thanks. Yeah, a lot of the time, sort of casual cheese enjoyers eat, uh, you know, American cheese, which is sort of the... I've heard people say that it's not real cheese, but I think they probably say that in sort of a joking, mocking way. You refer to its relatively poor quality. Yeah, Parmesan pasta. Yeah, that's a good combination. But yeah, so, uh, love to cook pasta foods. I do too. I do too. All right, I need to, if I'm going to do this, because this is the obstacle that has stumped me for the longest time. If I'm going to do this at all, I need to do this very carefully. Yeah, American cheddar is very popular in fast food, which makes up one fourth or so of all America's food. Basically, yeah. So I think sort of, you know, I grew up sort of my experience with uh, learning eating food in America, eating cheese in America for the most part was, uh, you know, eating American cheddar, uh, fast food American cheddar and, you know, store bought American cheddar and those sort of like individually plastic wrapped slices. And, you know, I, I didn't like that because it was cheddar because I don't, uh, I don't like, uh, sharp cheeses as you put it. Yeah. Don't like sharp or complex cheeses, I think. Yeah, only place where I eat cheddar is McDonald's. Fair enough. But yeah. Um, where was I? Oh yeah, so, you know, I, learning learning the cheeses that are available, I sort of uh, mostly just ate cheddar for a whole lot of my life, and then I just sort of came to the conclusion of, oh, you know, I don't like this, so, and this is the cheese that people serve. This is the cheese, the one cheese, so I guess maybe I just don't like cheese so much. And that's sort of been my assumption. But I guess now that now that I'm introduced to the idea that that it's not just sort of now that I've sort of been given the the words to describe it other than this is the normal cheese this is the normal cheese that we have here I guess I could probably yeah I don't know now that I have more terms to use to describe cheese maybe I could look into trying more different types of cheeses I don't know what is normal I mean yeah I mean, there's really, you know, there's no such thing as normal, really. It's a, it's entirely a construct, but, you know, this sort of the, what I was accustomed to, I sort of, you know, subconsciously associated cheddar with being the, the default, the default cheese, different countries, normal is something else. Yeah. I sort of associated, uh, Parmigiano Reggiano is also known as the king of all Italian cheeses. I saw a three e foot by one foot wheel of it at the store for one thousand dollars. That is that is big, big money for that cheese. All right. Yeah, this this is an obstacle that I that I would like a little bit of guidance on, to be honest. If uh, if you have any, that's not very expensive. The cheddar or the or the Parmigiano Reggiano? Because if a thousand dollars is not very expensive, <laughs> then I I am impressed. I am impressed at the the types of cheese that you are getting into. Yeah, I want tips. I would like I would like a, a little bit of a, a little bit of advice for the bucket. Yes, because this is this has been a a thorn in my side for a very long time. Yeah, wrong side of bucket. Hang on it. Oh. Never considered that. Hmm. Yeah. Fun question. What spicier habanero pepper or pepper spray? Yeah. Wave self a little bit. Um. Left to right. Probably should get more centered on the bucket if I'm going to do that. Should probably jump up a little bit more if I'm going to do that. Yeah. Habanero pepper or pepper spray? I want to say. Yeah. I was going to say. The answer is pepper spray. I was going to say pepper spray. I was going to say pepper spray. I hope you believe me now that the, I've already been given the answer. Pull yourself up and jump to left edge. Okay, okay. Yeah, I imagine there's probably not a whole lot of people who eat pepper spray. Though there's probably a non-zero amount. There probably are some people who do habitually eat pepper spray. Or probably 
don't eat it like straight. Probably put it on something. That's a that's a terrifying idea. Is it too much? Yeah. I just had the mental image of someone just like at a restaurant, they order some food, they order some food, uh, and then they just take out like uh, a can of pepper spray and spray it. And spray it before they eat it. Fun fact, make takes like tastes like fruit bat, which tastes like chicken. Hmm. Interesting. I've never had snake or fruit bat for that manner. Human also tastes like chicken. I'd heard that it tastes like pork. I guess, you know, meats can taste similar to more than one meat. Alright. So, let's carefully... Oh dear. Alright. I was... That came up a lot quicker than I was expecting, to be honest. That came up a lot quicker than I was expecting. And honestly, that, that was... Uh, I was a lot closer to successfully doing that than I, than I expected. So, well, that was, that could have gone better. All right, let's not get carried away, because I, if I start swinging too wildly here, then we're going to be introduced to the snake, I think. And I'd rather not make the snake's acquaintance. There we go. All right, right, and left, and back right, and fell off. Probably needed to be a little bit more centered there. Not, not a bad, not a bad effort though. Not here. Some might even say good. Yeah, eating grasshoppers, snails, hares, deer, bears, spiders, etc. Talking about people and food, despite popular belief, the chef knife is not the best best knife at cutting chefs. Gotcha. So yeah, let's see. I've had, I've had venison also, I've eaten deer, uh, I've not eaten, I've not eaten snail, uh, most of those things I haven't eaten actually, yeah, I think of those, of those that were just listed, I think the only one that I've eaten has, was deer. Yeah, I've eaten deer, venison, snail and garlic, I imagine so. So yeah, I've had deer. What if I, I think I had, I had like some sort of, once, once upon a time, I had like some sort of, some sort of insect with uh, some sort of flavor coating on it that I thought was okay. I think it might have been grasshopper. I'm not 100% sure. Right, so let's position the hammer a little bit better. This should be, I should be able to make this work. And then swing down. Mm. No, I think that actually made it worse. I think that's actually a lot worse than it was. Yeah, I guess because it's, yeah, because it's, it's pivoting around the edge of the hammer, right. So I need to position it so that the, the edge, the edge that I lean over is in the middle. Yeah, I ate uh, salty grasshoppers with chocolate-covered ones were good. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember what insect it was, and I don't remember what the flavor was, but I remember it was, it was okay, not amazing. Hmm. I don't like. They didn't position it very well again. I don't like where the hammer is, to be honest. So we're gonna try that again. Physical laws, you can't jump from the top of the bucket. Hmm. Yeah, sort of what I was trying to do, what I was hoping for, was I was sort of uh sort of trying to do what we were what we were doing from the bottom of the bucket. But uh you know, trying to swing it over and trying to sort of pop off and catch the the left flank. Yeah, one of my teachers said in class, insert ancient city here, ate grasshoppers, and then pulled out a bag of dried grasshoppers and gave five to everyone in class. Yeah, 
move a little bit to the right and left while the bucket is moving left. Pull yourself up. Yeah. I I understand the uh, the theory of it. It's just sort of the uh, the practice is the issue. Whoops. Oops. <laughs> there, I just didn't grab the bucket. There we go. Hmm. I don't like this position either, but honestly, I'm going to fall at some point anyway. Yeah. Simpler than you think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This maybe is a... Oh. I don't know. Good catch. Yeah. How many, how many endings do you think are in getting over it? I don't know, to be honest. I had assumed one much power yeah i figured as much yeah i'm sort of i'm hesitating a lot because i often end up sort of with the hammer on the edge of the bucket is that three hmm. interesting yeah i sort of end up with my hammer on the edge of the bucket should i be like too concerned about that yeah move move that just a hammer like good ending bad ending true ending hmm. very interesting I think probably part of the issue here is I think I'm jumping too high. So I'm coming down on the bucket with too much momentum, which is causing it to sort of bounce. And there, I didn't jump high enough. I think right there is the true ending. <laughs> I know I know that trick. I know that trick. I will not fall for it. That ending is beating the game. Gotcha. Oh dear. Yeah, need to be on the other side of bucket. Alright. So yeah, I'm sort of... Yeah. You can pull yourself up to the left. There we go. Is it... Is it a problem that I'm so far... Yeah, bad ending is getting your hammer stuck on the other side of the last obstacle causing you to soft lock. The... That is a terrifying idea. Ah. Alright, this seems better. I guess, yeah, like I was saying, I was sort of hesitating before. Because I... Unfortunate. Yeah. Try to pull yourself up when you when you move like that hard ball. Okay. Yeah, I was hesitating because I... I yeah, not joking, Bennett Foddy confirmed in the interview that the snake is the true ending. Hmm. Okay, okay. Gotcha. Now it looks like this is a a good ending run. Like the way you climb. Okay, okay. Oh dear. Right, that was a bad catch. Yeah, the bucket moves away if you hit it, so that's not a problem. Sort of, like I was saying, the sort of hesitation that I've... There we go. Yeah. The hesitation that I've been having is that I'm, you know, tending to end up on one... Like, very far to one side of the bucket. And I was sort of working under the assumption that that was bad, that I'd want to be sort of in the center. But should I be sort of more to the left? Obviously, I'm... I seem to be landing too far to the left is the issue now. Yeah. Try to do one, one pull... Yeah. One pull time straight up. here. I guess probably that's probably not what you meant by pull straight up. Oh dear. Yeah, without waving that bucket. Hmm. Probably be a little bit closer to the bucket if I'm going to try to jump onto it, huh? Or try to catch onto it when I jump. Oh. Uh, yeah, that was, that was just bad timing. Alright, down. Pretty slow now. Ah. Not slow enough, though, apparently. 
button. That's the wrong side. Is there any way I can really recover from that without having to just drop off? Or do I just drop off? I guess probably dropping off is the fastest way, so I should just do that. There we are. This seems to be a pretty good position. Ah. Good spot. Yeah, unfortunately I hesitated a little bit too much there. Alright. Hesitation is defeat, as they say. Yeah, focus too much weight. Focus too much on weight in the pocket. Hmm. Okay, okay. I guess, yeah, I was sort of working under the assumption that the goal was to sort of almost get to a point where I could, like, touch it. There we are. Nice. All right. So, thank you very much for your help. Yeah, just pull hard when you're moving to the left. All right. All right, I... Hmm. Now I'm faced with a bit of a conundrum. I sort of, you know, was going... Usually, I end things... Which way do I go? I think probably... Probably right. Like, this doesn't seem... This area doesn't seem like it was played and tested as much, so I, I think I should probably go to the right. Um, where was I? Oh, right. So, getting close to jump with Pogo. Hold on. Oops. All right. <laughs> Got a little bit too excited there. But yeah, so we're getting to a point. Getting close to the time where I would normally end the stream. Honestly, we're past the point where I would normally end the stream. I do kind of want to keep going a little bit, though, so that I can have made some progress today. So I guess I did make progress in that I managed to get get up. Yeah, long jump or high jump. Yeah. Again, I got... I read your message and I got a bit too excited and I tried uh, tried right away when I should not have. But that's on me. Ooh. Ah. Ah. Yeah. There again, I sort of panicked. I panicked because I didn't... I didn't expect to, uh... Honestly, I should probably... When I'm making a jump, I should probably focus on the jump that I'm doing and not read chat mid-jump. I should do that before and after the jump. Yeah, bad luck. You almost jumped straight to the right edge. Yeah. I saw... I looked over as I was jumping and I saw your message and I thought, Oh. And then I saw that I was making my way towards the, the right edge and I thought, Oh, I can, I can get it. But... You know, since I was a little bit distracted, I didn't, uh, yeah, I didn't, uh, I wasn't able to follow through on it, and then I wasn't able to catch myself on the left edge. Oops. Yeah, waving isn't necessary, but little movement helps you jump to the left side. Okay, okay. Gotcha. So yeah, I guess, again, sort of what I was thinking of was I was thinking that I was supposed to sort of ride the bucket, essentially, over to the left side. <sighs> Alright. Let's wait for the bucket to calm down a little bit. Take a sip in the meantime. When bucket moves, you move on that bucket. You get movement to the left from that bucket, so you just need to focus on pulling yourself up and high. Okay. Alright, not bad. It might be swinging a little bit too much. I feel like I don't have a very good grip here. But it's probably doable. Maybe get a little bit more momentum. 
Ah, not quite, not quite. All right, so we'll wait for the bucket to slow down a little bit more. Unfortunately, I can't reach high enough to sort of stop it. I guess I could if I do that, but... All right, so position, jump. Ah, not far enough to the right. With the hammer, just clip off the edge. That's not too bad. It could be better. But honestly, if we can make this work, we can make this work. Alright, we can't make this work. <laughs> yeah, you can jump straight and hit right edge to get to the left side and kick on the stairs with four orange and purple. Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Ah, unfortunate. So again, to, uh, to start making the point that I was making before, yeah, we are getting very close to the, or we are again past the point where I would normally end stream. I do kind of want to make a little bit more progress, but I think once we get up to that right edge, or honestly, maybe even if we just get enough to the, if get enough power, we can get straight up to the edge on the right. Yeah, I think if we either make it to the I don't know. I don't want to go too late. I don't want to go too late because I do need to. I do need to go. I do need to be ready for work in the morning. So I don't know. Maybe it might be for the best if I just call it here for now. I want to be further. You know, make it to a further point than I've been. But I don't know. We're we're already over time, so I think I think I'm just gonna have to call it. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit unfortunate that I wasn't able to make it further, but at least we we made it back. We made it back to the to the bucket, and now I know how to clear it. So I can't complain. But yes. So thank you for thank you all for for being here tonight. Thank you for your uh. Yeah. How often do I stream? I stream. I try to stream every or not every, but I try to stream uh, four days a week. Throughout most of the, the the work week, I stream Tuesdays through Fridays. Uh, but yeah, just about to go into the schedule there. So uh, I guess we might as well. So today, uh, Tuesdays, we do Getting Over It, and we will continue to do Getting Over It until I beat Getting Over It, at which point we'll do a different game. But, uh, but yes, Tuesdays, we do Getting Over It. Wednesdays and Fridays, I play Tales of Arise. Uh, and then Thursdays, I have a ongoing collab. I have an ongoing collab uh, with Sheppy Sheps, where we play uh, Valhalla, cyberpunk bartending action. We uh, we play through the game, we voice act the characters and all that. I've been signed out on my Twitch on, on my browser, so I need to yeah, see you later when I am day up too late, 6 a.m. at the moment. Gotcha. You get some rest there. Yeah. I want to say Ajay. Ajay, is that about it? Yeah, I. Yeah, I'll I'll do my best to uh to pronounce that. Yeah, as best I can. Pretty close. All right, I I suppose I'll I'll take that for now. But yeah. So anyway, like I was saying, Tuesdays, getting over it. Thursdays and Fridays, Tales of Arise. Thursdays, uh, uh, Valhalla with Sheppy Sheps. Yeah. So usually around, uh, I stream at about 7.30 p.m. 7.30 p.m. Eastern time, or er, eh, Central time here in the U.S. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know what time zone you are in, or necessarily what, I guess if it's, yeah, about 6 where you are, that would be, yeah, that would, about 3 hours ago. So yeah, about 3.30, 3.30 a.m. your time zone. So yeah, so... Late, uh, late night streams, late night streams for you, early morning streams, I guess, perhaps even. But, uh, but yeah, that's about when I stream, the days that I stream, and the times that I stream. Uh, and then on, yeah, then on the collab days, on Thursdays, I typically stream around 8 p.m., 8.30 p.m. my time, which would be, based on what I just learned, yeah, about 4.30 p.m. your time. 
yeah, so anyway, whoops. Yeah, so now is the end of the stream, so it's time for a raid. I'm always open to raid suggestions from anyone else. So if anyone, if you have anyone that you would like to go visit for a raid, I would be glad to hear it. If not, I can find a target for myself. Sip real quick. Yeah. Once again, thank you for your advice, Majay. Thank you for your uh, thank you for the follow as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not any. Yeah. Not any favorite streamer at the moment. Gotcha. Gotcha. But yeah. Thank you. The concept of Infinity Thirteen for or sorry, Fifteen. Fifteen. I misread that. Also for your thanks for calming night. Thanks for thanks for enjoying it. But yes. Um. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Thank you for your cheese cheese advice. The concept of Infinity Fifteen. I do I do genuinely appreciate that quite a bit. I appreciate having the words to describe what sorts of cheese I do and don't like. It will help me make more informed cheese decisions in the future. But yeah. So I think tonight we will go and we will raid. Yeah, I think we'll go and raid Altariana, friend of mine, a collaborate a frequent collaborator. Yeah, playing some Terraria tonight. Yeah, let's get that raid set up. Uh, yes. Another VTuber, Kato VTuber. I actually rigged his model as well. Yeah, I didn't draw it, but uh, but yeah, I did rig it. Yes, the customary raid message is we have arrived. Yeah, it's not using the model today, it looks like. But yeah. Alt is currently playing some Terraria. That will go and visit. Yeah. So, I think that's everything that needs to be said, basically. So, thank you all very much for being here tonight. I hope that you have had a fine night. I hope that you will continue to have a fine night every night. And I hope that you will be well until the next time I see you. Thank you all very much, and farewell. Let us get this raid underway.